So Stephen, what happened at tonight's Node.js meetup in Portsmouth at the Praxium? Yeah, tonight was the first Portsmouth Node.js meetup. A six or eight guys came from around the area. They wanted to learn how to make software and apps using Node.js. Some of the guys had software development experience, some were brand new, and most of them hadn't used Node.js at all. So we talked about what kind of things we want to build. We watched a really cool video on Node.js and what you can use it for. And then we came up with an idea of something we wanted to make, which was which used a core feature of Node.js, WebSockets. Then everyone busted out their laptops and they all worked through the problem and, and built a cool WebSocket application. And we ended up having a, a chat window that we could chat with each other, uh, all built in Node.js and it was cool. And then what happened afterwards? And afterwards we went downstairs to the liar's bench and had some delicious beer that was brewed right there in that building and chatted about Bitcoin and Ethereum and all kinds of great stuff. Is this going to continue? Yeah, we're going to have this indefinitely, um, once a month, maybe even at once every two weeks if we can pull that off and uh, hope to learn more next, next month or next meeting is about Electron. That's how to make desktop apps with Node.js for any Windows, Mac, Linux. It's going to be great. What can people do to prepare for the next meetup? Well, um, get Node.js installed on your computer, look into Electron, maybe do an Electron tutorial, and um, yeah, be ready to make something. Come with cool ideas of things to make. Oh, and also uh, check out the Slack channel we have. We now have a community Slack channel. That's portsmithnodejs.slack.com. Thanks. Peace. Node.js and like its its place in the in like the uh, coding ecosystem. I thought it'd be really uh, useful if anyone is interested in watching that I was going to before doing more hands-on activity. Uh, okay, cool. And then after that, I was hoping we could maybe have like two teams of people and design uh, Node.js app and then build like the two halves of it or something like that. Um, We've got a couple laptops. So. How's it going? I need to turn the notifications off on my phone. Sure, I'll still annoy everybody. Uh, okay, so welcome everybody. Uh, I'm glad that you got to see the the nice changeover of the laptops. It's sort of a ritual. Uh, really nice. Okay, uh, I'm going to talk about Node, uh, how Node is doing, how it's spread, and how we've uh, come to think about Node at the Node Foundation. As to illustrate all the different like things that you can do with Node.js. Um, I had no idea about the Electron platform. It's amazing the amount of stuff going on that like, no matter how deep you dive in, there's just more. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know, it was interesting, I was like. Well, Electron in particular is really cool. Like, um, I've been using it recently to make things that's really easy to make desktop apps cross-platform uh, with Node.js. I'm not going to do the, uh, the logic process for the actual app because I'm, I, I suck at that part. The graphing of stuff is, is easy enough. So, a, a 
how hard would it be to construct a, a four-way chat client? We got we got four PCs that, that can communicate with each other in the alarm sockets. Is that is that a difficult thing to do? I don't know. Is, is Are we all the same network? I know that it's not because well, I mean it depends on what you want to do though, but like I know it's not because like um, like socket.io if that library has a uh, like an example on it, that's pretty easy. And it's, so, well, the key is the we want like a server client um, system. Mm -hmm. If you're using socket.io. Okay. Okay. So, are we gonna do something like that, or are we, are we gonna have like serverless? Well, you have to have the server kind of set up the uh, the relationships. So one of us would have to act as a server. Yeah, one of us would have to be a server. Okay. I, I don't know unless there's another way. Isn't there a similar thing to one of your web, web sockets where you can see the uh, uh, bonjour uh, protocol for it? Does, yeah, it try to have something on the fly. Does, does anybody have a project that they're currently working on in Node that, that they want to show off or anything that's, that's, uh, that's, that's not NDA? Well, that's not good. <laughs> long-running connection to this WebSocket server. And then, so let's say e each of us has our, our, our WebSocket client. What's a, what's like a notification someone might, might want to receive in like real time? You have mail. You've got mail, sorry. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, a message. So, so these WebSocket clients can receive messages in real time. They can have messages pushed to them from the server. And they can also send messages to the server, which might then be sent out to another client, broadcast out to everyone or, or um, something. Uh, basically, so WebSockets are two-way two things. Okay. Um, does anyone have socket IO? Uh, I I have it in, but um, I don't have uh, internet connectivity here, so. Our, our, our oh, you can connect to the internet. Or what's the? I do npm init, um, which uh, initializes a new Node.js package. Uh, base like the basic first thing that I always do in Node.js. And that will ask you some questions. Um, about it, you could do dash f to like skip all the questions. So dash so dash save. This package. And, uh, can you say that again? <laughs> yeah, uh, to install the, the so socket kind of IO package, do yeah. npm install dash yeah. dash save, and that will so put the, the package yeah. locally in your project directory. Yeah. So if, if you do dash g, it saves it globally so that. Uh, so that you can it's use a good it all here. Um, yeah. yeah. Right, but it won't add it to your package JSON. So, like, if you commit that and then like put it on another server, you won't have that dependency there. Okay. Sending and receiving events. Thing. It doesn't require Express at all. You guys are looking at demos or docs? Yeah, yeah I'm looking at docs.
So the require socket.io is the package import for, for Node.js. Um, it's pretty basic. And then it has, I think in the example it has 80 here. Is that right? Yeah. So this is the port number that you're going to be listening to. Um, a lot of times your operating system might prevent you from finding a port 80 without sudo privilege. But um, usually I do like, you can put port 3000 or something like that. Um, that creates a socket.io server and then starts listening on this port 3000. So it, it uh, opens up a, a socket on that port and um, then clients can connect to that port 3000. And then so the next most basic thing is this io.on um, connection, is that right? Yep. Okay. So this one in Node.js uh, for uh, for primitive is a called an event emitter. Uh, it's a, basically an object that has events, and you can listen to those events. So you can say like on some event name. And then later on, that object can say uh, emit and then emit name, and everyone who's listening to that event will get notified. Um, and so for Socket IO, whenever a new client connects to the WebSocket server, it, this connection event happens. And then it gives you a, a reference to that client socket that's connected. All right. um, does that make any sense in the lineup? Yeah, it makes sense. So like this socket is probably the parameter you're getting. Um, that represents like this, uh, this connection here between the client and the server. All right, so like say this is server.js, you write, run the command line node server.js. And that will start up your program. package called socket.io-client. Okay, so um, socket.io was originally designed to have a Node.js backend and a browser front end. So there's like a JavaScript browser for the client component. Um, but what I'd like to do in this exercise is have a separate process that's Node.js be the client. Um, so you have your server running and then your client process and it'll connect to your server. Does that make sense? Yep. Um, so yeah, so if you do npm install dash save socket.io dash client, that's what you mean. You can look that up. Yes, it is. Cool. And you should probably have pretty good documentation on how to connect. Does Node itself not do hot reload? Uh, no. What is this I'm looking at? Um, well, here, check this out. So here you're looking at the server, which is listening to port 3000, and then you can see that a client connected to it. So are you both the server and the client in this case? Uh, this process is the server, and then this process next to it is the client. So there's two Node.js processes running. And they're going to talk to each other? They do. They are talking to each other. OK. What are they saying? Yeah, what are they? are saying, please shake my hand. Oh, okay. Um, has anyone managed to connect a client to their server? Or have a little lost? Uh, I am confused about, like, and I see, like, a, I'm in the client docs here, but I'm looking for, like, 
Like these are all HTML files. Mm -hmm. So, right. There's another. So in, in Node, <coughs> these are for like the, the browser JavaScript builds. Yep. Um, and there's a separate Node.js package <laughs> called socket.io client. Yeah, okay. So I'm just on my wrong package. So I just searched for that. There you go. I guess it helps when you put some logging messages in. Yeah. Then you can actually see it do something. So now you have it uh, oh, cool. logging the socket. Well, that's yeah. the only object I had. Just I just took the first opportunity to put a log in there. So now that you have that, you have it connected. Um, this this io.init that is a server sending um, a message to all the clients that they can listen for. Oh, okay, well then. So the name of the message so is I need, uh, this, I guess, is the name of the message. So, um, you should be able to listen to me. Hey, Stephen, can you tell me what's happening now? Yeah, um, most people have have uh, their socket.io server running. They've got clients connecting up to it, yeah. and they're starting to be able to send messages back and forth between the server and the clients in real time. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I got your chat. Is that it? What is it? 10.1? Ten ten oh, yeah, I'm going to type something. 10.1.10.128.4300. Hey! Fucking hell, it worked. <laughs> well, hello there. What are you wearing? Oh, wait, never mind. Wrong, wrong, <laughs> wrong chat room. <laughs> wrong chat room. He's So you got a you got a chat program working? Oh, I got a chat program working. Cool. There you go. So let's do a 10.1.10.128 for 3000. 128. 10.1.10.4 3000. Yeah. And now say something. Yeah, go to that. Go to that. Wow. <laughs> All right. So I can connect to that, that server from my client instead of from the web browser and install right. it. Right. I, I set up a little web server in here on port 3000. Cool. And, 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 turn, and used, used the uh, admit command to, um, to respond to chats. So we're all, we're all, we're all chatting now. Nice. <laughs> so, go over, so go over that little connection with Is this all in the connection block for you? Do you want to? On the, on the you want to show people how you do that? Yeah. Sure. Um, and, uh, oh, come on. There. Basically, they have a Reddit chat application section, and I walk through the entire process of how to how to establish the port? How do you how to um, set it up and what each line of code means? Oh, great! And this is right at socket.io. Okay. Yeah. Well, do you want to explain that to people? Do you think that would be useful? I could. From so those so those uh, that first parameter to the dot on 
is not any predefined event. It is it's a, a string right. to identify what operation you're requesting. Yeah, yeah to identify event, this packet of information yes. as yeah. like a customer account or a yeah. payment or and basically a deposit any, or any event name could come across. Okay, I thought the we message were, I thought I was going to some socket IO standard. No, I think but connected and disconnected are are um, are just standards. What are you trying to do right now? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that wasn't me. <laughs> Somebody's trying to see you in my box. All right. Now, are you guys interested in, in seeing how this chat thing works? Yeah. Explaining it? Uh, well, do you know? Know? I, I'm, I'm not going to explain it. I will point to the website and say this is how they said it was done. I, I'm, it's not like I um, okay. Okay, figure this out on my own. Well, you just plug that in. All right. I don't think that's going to work. The yeah, thanks. People. Have you met him? Yeah. We should definitely do that. They, they just opened up a couple months ago. And they, they brew down there. just to be able to like talk to other people and bounce ideas off of and everything. I think, I, I mean, I don't want to say we should have homework or anything, but if we can pick like a topic for the next time yeah. and, and then ha have something that we can all kind of like chew on and think about before we come the next time. That way, that way we have something that we, I'm not, I'm not saying like, like have homework to take homework like that, but just like what, what's, what's a thing that we want to maybe play with next time or what's a topic that we want to cover and, and perhaps like a, if, if you've got like a demo or a project you just want to show off, that would that would be that would be awesome. That would be really cool. Okay. Yeah, or, or if anybody else has a project or a demo or something like that, that would be cool. I have that. Yeah. Probably. Well, I mean, you're, you're you're steeped in in programming lore, so. <laughs> um, well, I, I thought it was fun to. I, I learned some. Um, I I'm, I was glad to talk to a couple people. We helped each other figure stuff out. Yeah. Um, was that the first socket, like web socket thing we've done with Node.js? I, we're, I we're actually did the, the chat program that, uh, that you did. Yeah. So that was my first um, foray. But so actually I, I followed the tutorial and built it on top of Express. But so this is the first time I did it without using Express. And it wasn't, I guess it, it wasn't even clear to me that I could do this without Express. So now I kind of have a little bit, like I actually got my 52 to pass over, so uh, it's a little bit more clear to me how to use it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah, I was hoping to, to try to not use Express and, and be a little lower level. I think you're right, though, that it could be even lower, uh, more basic. Well, we might want to focus on, I mean, to jump into Socket IO is the first thing. Well, the that only thing pretty. people said they wanted to learn was sockets. So oh, that's, that's, yeah, that uh, yeah, that's yeah, why we did that. I, I, I only know, tinkered I know with it a, a little bit. So, like, I, I mean, with Node a little bit, so I've been exposed to Express and, like, some of the more popular modules. Well, I was thinking about Electron 
being a cool topic yeah. to cover. Oh, uh, you second that motion. That'd yeah. be good. Um, yeah. For next time, if y'all want to come next time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll try to be super cool. That's no JS. I mean, the only, the only time that I wouldn't come is because, uh, on a Wednesday night is because sometimes I teach classes on Wednesdays. So okay. after 8.30 on Wednesday nights, sometimes I teach classes. So other than that, I'm, I'm available. Okay. Want to go downstairs to the library? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>